Did you understand that you being was necessary to keep up what she built? Because you got a, a house from Habitat for Humanity. You got donations. You got different things from people for being. That was a source of income for her, right? It was, yes. And I had no idea that I was a part of that. You didn't know that you were a cash cow? No. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, July 26th. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So I have some happy news for those of you that have been around on my channel for a really long time. Uh, if you have been here since 2019, leave a comment and let me know because if you have, you should know that I have been covering this story since the fall of 2019 on my channel and it is about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. So back in 2019, she was the family of Gypsy Rose Blanchard was in the middle of a lot of stuff going on on social media and I had gotten to know the family and I became sort of friendly with them and uh, helped them out of some of the sticky situations and some of the icky rumors that were going on on uh, social media. And over the years, I've been able to maintain a really positive place with the family. And so when I saw today's news, which was broken by in touch, I reached out to my family source to one, one, verify that this was in fact true, two, get you guys some details about the situation, and three, let y'all know what Gypsy's up to because I know so many of you are here in support of her and really do uh, like love to send encouragement to her given everything that she has been through. So Gypsy Rose Blanchard is now a married woman. Congratulations, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Okay, so let's talk about the details. I'll bring you up to speed on who she is if you don't, if you're living under a rock, because literally everyone I know knows who she is. So Gypsy Rose, in touch, reported, is now a married woman. Now, what I did was I reached out to my family source, and some of the details that in touch put out the family source said were not completely accurate and not because for a lack of their trying. It's just that the way that the documents were filed, it was confusing. So they just wanted to give a little bit of a clarification about all of that. So this is what happened. So according to the source, Gypsy married a man named Ryan Scott Anderson on July 21st of 2022. So In Touch had reported that the marriage date was June 27th of 2022. That was actually when they uh, applied for the marriage license, the source said, but the actual marriage was last Thursday on July 21st, 2022. So they just got married last week. Uh, and apparently the source said the family is super happy for uh, Gypsy and for Ryan and extremely excited for the future because Gypsy is eligible for parole next year. So for a lot of you, you remember that at one point she was engaged to this guy named Ken. Ken was also, he was like in those gypsy support groups and he was very active and all of that. And so, you know, people were always sort of questioning Ken's motives and uh, things have been pretty quiet on the gypsy front for several years since they've been able to manage some of these rumors, which is a good thing. Like she deserves some peace in her life. Uh, so here's the scoop on her husband and what the family source wanted everyone to know about him because he's apparently a pretty solid dude. So this is what they said is that she got married to Ryan. He is actually from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And this was um, a guy that is 36 years old. He is a teacher. Uh, the friend said he's super private. So you will never you'll never see him posting like that he's engaged or even married like this relationship was so under the radar because Ryan himself is such a private guy. Um, and really, the family source said that he is in this for Gypsy and no one else. Like, they really said that, like, Gypsy, like, Ryan doesn't care about this media circus around her. He loves and fell in love with Gypsy for who she is, not for what happened, not for what she's in jail for, but in the media circus, in the sort of the infamy around her, he's in this for her and he loves her 
for who she is and nothing more. And because of that, he's been very guarding of her privacy. The source let me know. And super solid, super steady. His family, his mom, the source said, supports the relationship. And he is just, he's got a job. He's been a constant in Gypsy's life for years. Apparently they started emailing uh, several years ago and she and him had developed this like friendship and eventually that friendship turned into more. And as that friendship turned into more, he began becoming a regular visitor. So he would go up to Missouri where she's an inmate and he would become a regular visitor for her. And they got to grow their relationship through emails, communications, phone calls, and visits to the prison. So the wedding was last week and she is apparently super super happy so there's been some questions about like how does the family feel what's going on there well apparently my sources is that rod and christy blanchard so rod is gypsy's dad and christy is her stepmom and rod and christy who also have two children that are gypsy's half siblings um everyone is thrilled so basically what they said is that Rod and Christy have met Ryan several times. Uh, they absolutely adore him. They love that he is super supportive of Gypsy. They believe that he is in this for the exact right reasons. And their biggest takeaway in all of this is that Gypsy is happy. And they recognize that some people might be critical of her getting married before she gets out. But, you know, Gypsy's growing and she's a woman now she's 31 years she'll be 31 years old next month and part of being a woman and part of being an adult is being able to make decisions and so making decisions like getting married are big for an adult and was one that gypsy was ready to take and make with ryan so when she's released she'll go be with Ryan. But the good news here is that he's not very far from where her parents live. So, and I call him her parents because that's really the role that Rod, Rod has. He is dad. But Christy, more than anything, has really taken on the motherly role and been a mom to Gypsy that I think she's never had. And so, you know, we're going to call him her parents because Christy is been a huge advocate for Gypsy the entire time, these past seven years, um, even leading up to the trial. This family has been there for her, supporting her the whole way, getting her through some of the toughest times of her life. And they're ready for her to be able to get out next year, hopefully, and be out in the world for the very first time in her life. So the family is very, very, very happy for Gypsy, super happy. And this is what they said about Gypsy in the last couple years. So she has been incarcerated since 2015. And they said that she's doing amazing, like so well. She has grown so much the last seven years. She's matured a ton. Uh, she has recently completed her GED. So one thing that people were wondering about was she, her mom, really did not educate her at all. She had to learn how to read herself through Harry Potter books. And in the last seven years, she completed her GED. So she passed the GED last year, said the family source. And they said that GD, Gypsy completing her GED was like a humongous accomplishment for her a, and a huge achievement for the family. And everyone was so happy because there was a lot of naysayers online and she she proved them all wrong. And she is taking the bull by the horn. And if you're wondering if she takes full responsibility for what happened to her mother, yes, she completely accepts what happened. She has never ever blamed anyone else for the situation. She has taken her responsibility and she wants to be able to move forward when this is all said and done. So if you're not familiar with Gypsy, We'll get, we'll get to you here. So she has one year left until she's eligible for parole. So here's what the scoop is. So she's doing really well. She's super happy. She completed her GED. She has been making the most of her time while she's there. She's been involved in some programs. Some of them were cut off during COVID, but she really is focused on making sure that she takes care of herself. And the family friend said that after she's out, uh, there has been arrangements made to make sure that she has long-term care to help her deal with everything in her life, like to make sure that she has someone to talk to, a professional to help her through this process. So Gypsy is going to be eligible for, 
for parole on December of 2023. And in the state of Missouri, how it works is she has to serve up to eight years of 80% of her total sentence. When she was sentenced in 2015, she was sentenced to 10 years. And based upon the sentencing requirements, inmates in the state of Missouri have to serve 80%. So her actual release date, if she served the full 10 years, would be 2025. Her parole eligibility is 2023. And according to the family source that I spoke to, they do anticipate that she'll hope, hopefully be paroled next year. And when she is paroled, they said that she has everybody that's going to be there for her, everyone that will be there to support her and so many people to encourage her. They know it's not going to be easy. They know it's going to be her first time ever having any sense of freedom in the real world. And they know that she's going to have to learn and grow herself. And that's part of becoming an adult. And she didn't get the chance to do that when she was living with her mother. If you're not familiar with Gypsy, she has a horrible, oh, it's such a sad, it's such a tad, sad tale, really, because she grew up, um, her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, has Munchau had Munchausen's by proxy, and she put Gypsy through so many medical procedures in her life. She had her teeth like removed due to medication that she placed her on. She put her on a G-tube even though she could fully eat. They, she confined her to a wheelchair even though she could walk. She had uh, some of her glands move, removed in her mouth. She had so many like unnecessary medical procedures because Gypsy because Dee Dee wanted the world to believe that Gypsy was ill and she was using Gypsy as kind of a cash cow for free stuff. In fact, they got a Habitat for Humanity home in Missouri. They claimed that they were Hurricane Katrina uh, survivors and had to relocate. Um, she was able to get trips for various, like through uh, Make-A-Wish and so many nonprofits that sort of like gave gifts to her and to the family. And for Dee Dee, it was also that she didn't want to allow Gypsy to grow up. And so she tried to fabricate Gypsy's age and say that she was younger than she was. So when she originally went missing, they actually thought that she was only like 17 years old, but the truth was is she was 23. So yeah, not 17, not even close. So when she was caught, when she was 23, when she was actually caught after what happened to Dee Dee, she was 23 years old. but. The community thought she was a minor because Dee Dee tried to fabricate her birth certificate. Throughout that time, they moved around a lot. She doctor shopped her Dee Dee, like Dee Dee isolated her and put her through so much, uh, controlled her access to the internet, to having friends. She wouldn't let her do anything. She convinced people that she had a low IQ and would not know how to do anything, no basics in reading and writing. and made everyone think that she was incapable of making any decisions on her own. And most important, most importantly, is that when everything happened with Dee Dee, people believed that she couldn't walk. And so they believed that something had happened to Gypsy. So Gypsy ends up getting to a point where she believes that if she doesn't leave, that her mom is going to eventually end her life. Because at that point, she was 23 years old. She had no freedom. She had been put through so much hell medically at the hands of her mother through doctors that it was it felt like life or death for her. And she met a guy, really twisted guy, she met a um, man named Nicholas Godajan online who was able to, uh, she's never denied that she explained the situation to Nicholas and that she felt like she had no other way out. And the two of them crafted a plan where they eventually ended Dee Dee's life. And, Gypsy did not participate in the actual events, but she certainly provided access to the home, access to all the information needed to be able to do it. But, you know, the thing about it is, is that this guy, if you have watched anything about him, man is a monster, man is twisted as hell, and he actually is serving life in prison. Um, he was offered a deal by prosecutors and he refused. He tried to blame Gypsy for literally everything. and he wanted to make it seem like he had autism and wasn't capable of making these decisions unfortunately gypsy was his like gypsy went on the stand and if you haven't watched her testimony in his case i think it gives a good understanding of who gypsy is because she was very clear very concise she admitted everything but she also acknowledged who he was and what he did 
and what his choices were that were not things that she co-signed to. And so he's serving life in prison. She, because she was a victim of Dee Dee, because she had no experience in the real world, she was also in many ways a victim of Nicholas. Uh, he's in life, serving in life in prison. So um, she's, she's free now in prison. Isn't that weird? She did an interview with Dr. Phil several years ago, and she said it the most free she's ever felt is in prison because she finally doesn't have anyone like her mom controlling her every move. So now, in about a year, she'll be eligible to be released, and she's going to have a whole life ahead of her, you guys. I am so excited for her. I think, you know, I... <laughs> I got a little teary-eyed when I was talking to the family source because I was thinking about how in 2019 there was all these not naysayers on online and they were saying that Gypsy was never going to get her GED and that she would never amount to anything. She was just as manipulative as Dee Dee. And, and I remember thinking like, who are you to say that? And so when I found out she finished her GED, I felt like screaming and jumping through the roof. Like I was so happy. And you know what? More than anything, the family's happy for her. And that makes me happy. So nothing in this in this case i never felt like she should go to prison i always felt like she needed psychiatric care and unfortunately prisons are not for reforming prisons are like babysitting someone until they finish their time so her aftercare after release is going to be another part of the process of her healing but she's she's growing up now she's a wife so i'm so excited for her and you know what the family says that he's a good guy and i trust their I trust them. When they, when the family source says this guy is solid, he is a good person, I believe them. They are a good judge of character. These are solid, Creole, Louisiana, going to make you some gumbo kind of people. And uh, if daddy approves, I ain't got problem with that. So Gypsy Rose Blanchard is now a wife. Ah, I can't. I'm so excited. Now, um, if you're not familiar with the story, there's there's a documentary on this called Mommy, Dead and Dearest, um, which is on HBO. That actually included the family. Um, and then there's the act, which is a dramatized version of the series of this of the story. It's not a true account of what happened. There's definitely aspects that happen that were added to that storyline that did not happen to Gypsy. So if you really want to get dive in and like learn, start with Mommy, Dead and Dearest. I think it's on HBO. And you can always Google, there's so much information on this case, but congratulations to Gypsy and to Ryan and to the whole Blanchard family. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.